Okay, final method. Exaggerate what you see. Now, this is the method that I love the most. And really, it's because this is where you are taking everything from understand what you see and you're adding your own personality. So when I look at this, I, I already understand it's a cylinder. So that's great. I, I have, at this point, you have everything that the, the guy with understanding has. You're just taking it one step further and you're adding your own style. So I kind of like how this is, uh, you know, I could, I could look at this two ways. I could look at it like it's a tall, skinny cylinder or uh, maybe a, a fat cylinder. And here I have an opinion. I have things to say. I can say, you know, I think the spout is really interesting. I'm not going to make it too tall because it's not. So I'm going to make it really short and then it has this little red thing popping out in its handle or, or this one, you know, it's tall. I'm thinking maybe it's tall and uh, I'm going to really push that and it's got this thing. The spout kind of like this whole thing kind of reminds me of a bird. So I'm going to be thinking of that when I draw it. I'm going to think of a bird. And it's got a little bird handle, um, like the feathers or whatever on the back of the head. And this little red thing. So, I mean, to me, this is this one. It's much more appealing than just, you know, the the draw what you see it's got some personality to it and the other thing that's great is I can get rid of the reference and if I remember you know what I was saying as my opinion I can easily draw this I can say okay I remember I was drawing a coffee pot it was tall it looked like a bird and it had this spout that's kind of angled you know it's really easy to to remember what you drew and this is something that I think is missing a lot. This is something I really wanted to to gain this this final method, um, and it's taught in animation, for example. Uh, but animators don't often share what they know. Um, it's also big in caricature, and the other thing is that things like caricature, for example, and I mean like high quality caricature, like look at stuff by Jason Seiler, but um, it's almost looked down on. Like people don't give it the credit it, it deserves. Uh, this this exaggeration thing. It's also used by guys like Norman Rockwell, who he's amazing. If you can, I mean, when I was younger, I lo I'd look at his work and I judge it based on subject matter, and I didn't really care too much. I thought, you know, like yeah, he's good at painting, but he's just painting these boring. Uh, scenes of you know family life or whatever but as I uh, as I've grown up and developed as, as an artist you just appreciate him more and more he's he's got an incredible sense of design he caricatures pretty much everything even when people say well he traces photographs it's uh, you know it's hard to just think that he traces photographs when you can see he clearly exaggerates things and he caricatures things. So, um, amazing guy. Um, but yeah, this is like, to me, this is the final stage. And this stage is where things like anime come from. It's someone who understood the fundamentals. They can, they already understand what they see and they can draw what they see. And now they're exaggerating what they see. So that's where they can look at a highlight and think, you know, my, my way of doing it's going to be like this. And then what happens is people who uh, maybe are starting out and they, they think that's an awesome style and they don't see all the years because this, this is even more years on top of the uh, understand what you can see to exaggerate what you see. So it's, it's, it's really difficult. Um, and other people don't see that and they just look at the style and they think, hey, I can copy that. So then they just end up, you know, copying. And what does that do? Well, it cheapens the style. That's one thing, because then this style becomes more popular and less people actually want to see it. It'll start to look boring and people will be like, 
Oh, I've seen that before. And I mean, anime, it's a perfect example. At the heart, the, whoever created the styles, um, when they did so, and they, they were learning off each other, you know, each time developing their own style. And it's kind of, you know, derivative. It's, it's looking back at itself a lot. Um, but it's still, it's pretty amazing. Um, the problem is that people who don't have the fundamentals, they didn't have the foundation, they didn't have this strong background, they're just going to go into copying and other people will see it and they'll see this bad art over and over again and they'll think, you know, anime sucks. And no, it doesn't. It's an amazing style. Uh, or, I mean, it's not just one style. There's lots of people doing their own styles. But it's an amazing way of exaggerating something. Um, it's just overdone by people who really don't understand. And when you do understand, you can... Um, you can put your own voice to things. You can find your own style. Problem is, again, this takes years of practice. So, you know, I mean, I can't say that it's going to be easy to get to this stage. It, it certainly isn't. Um, but, I mean, it's freaking rewarding. If you can get here, um, yeah, you'll feel great about yourself because because it's so hard. And I'm not saying I think I'm great or anything. I'm just saying it is rewarding to get to the point that you can actually, you know, draw cool stuff instead of um, just look at other people's stuff. And yeah, at this point, you'll be able to look at anime and understand what the person was doing behind it or cartoons or anything. You'll be able to really see um, what the thought uh, what the thinking process was behind it. So anyway, this video has been going on for a while now. And again, this is really just to to educate people because starting out, again, I had no method. I didn't know anything about methods. It wasn't until um, I think my first teacher and he, he told me, you need a method. And if you want to get good, you need to be fast. And if you want to be fast, you got to pretty much stick to one method and perfect it. Um, being greedy, I would, uh, I do a method and then I'd try and learn the other guy's method. So, um, because of that, I kind of have a decent handle on almost all the methods, but, um, not tracing. I, I was never into tracing or copying, but, um, yeah. So I hope, uh, at least this is informative and you have a new understanding of things, especially uh, one of my goals was that if someone's thinking about pursuing this this field, being an artist professionally, um, yeah, it, it, it's good to know that, you know, you might be looking at step by steps and thinking this is going to help me to get to a professional level. And maybe that's not the best thing. Maybe you really should be um, focusing on foundations. Uh, maybe learning about drawing what you see or understanding what you see. So anyway, hope that helped and uh, thanks for watching.